Okay. Women Matters in December, we are okay. in December of 2022. Oh, today is Mozart's death, death day. Is it? How many years? Oh. Plenty. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank more. you. Plenty is okay. <laughs> He died in 17, 1791. So um, that's nine plus 22 is 31. It's a little early in the morning for me. So 31, 231 years. Is that right? And the music right. is valid. Still, still beautiful. Yes. And um, so I encourage everyone on this day every year to listen to the Mozart Requiem as befits his death anniversary, yeah. which is a beautiful piece. It's a it's a spotty piece because some of the movements because he died while he was writing it. So some of the movements are a little dubious. As soon as you hear something that doesn't sound as great as Mozart, then you know it's something that got pasted. Zeus Kent. It was his uh, Zeus Kent, big... Yeah. No, Zeus Meyer. Zeus Meyer. Zeus Meyer. Zeus Meyer. His Zeus big is a competi name. competition uh, person who was angry that Mozart was better than himself, no? But he did it. No, no. Zeus, that's Salieri. Ah, Salieri, see, yeah. It's but Zeus Meyer, Zeus Meyer was, you're right, Zeus Meyer finished the Requiem and he was Mozart's pupil. Yeah. No, he was very devoted to Mozart, but just not very gifted. Okay. So that's, I guess that's my share for the moment. <laughs> that was your introduction, okay. Happy, happy death day of Mozart. <laughs> but you didn't say how you are. You said that you're not, not having a good day or you're not... Oh, oh, that's typical. I, I always try to distract from the, um, I just heard a talk last night where someone said that um, Blaise Pascal said, we spend our whole life with divertissement because we want to avoid the big existential questions. So I relate to that. Um, actually, I don't at all. Um, no, I, it would be a long litany and it would sound like something in the nursing home, um, arthritis, um, I've, when my doctor took me off a of medication, so I've gained, I immediately gained 15 pounds, it, literally like immediately, like within, I don't know, two weeks. Oh, there is Beatrice. Mm -hmm. um, um, just on and on a cold. I have a bad cold. It keeps coming back. I keep thinking it's going away. Then it comes back. Um, I can't walk. Um, my right knee is completely just overwhelmed by arthritis. So um, I have to keep elevating my knee. I had to practice the violin in this very convoluted position last night, which is very annoying because of my knee. Um, and I can't seem to, I have brain fog from COVID. So I can't seem to, I don't know, like every now and then I can't read the notes of the music I'm practicing. Like they don't make sense to me. And um, and I'm even having that like with the computer, like the other twice or three times, I've forgotten where the parenthesis is, which key <laughs> when I've been typing something. So it's like the the brain fog is is very willkürlich. Um, what's the word in English? Um, arbitrary, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, oh. yeah. Anyway, we go on and on and on. I think that's enough to give you the idea that everything is. Um, Alice is hin, as I wrote to Monia last week. <laughs> Ach, du lieber oh, Augustine, Alice is hin. Um, yeah. What Alice, we call that is, is organ recital. Organ recital, right. <laughs> well, my, my organs, most of my organs are still functioning, thankfully. <laughs> While you are doing the organ reciting, uh, Monia normally does the weather forecast. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the weather here is fine. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Hello, Beatrice. Nice to see you. Hello, Monia, do you want to continue? Yeah, um, How is the weather in Vienna? <laughs> the weather? No, I won't. I won't. It's dark outside. I have no idea what the weather is. It's raining, drizzling, snowing, something like that. So it's mm -hmm. miserable to go outside. And I have almost finished uh, When the Buddha Needs Therapy mm -hmm. by Keith. And I'm feeling very lucky and very blessed that I don't have as many traumatas as, as other people do, because obviously they just get into your back and kick you down. 
most unexpectedly and it's uh, yeah and I don't suffer like this and I did my shadow work of course and I still do it and it's one of the most necessary things to do but on the other hand I felt almost sorry for that man because he is he, when he looks into the camera on the photo hmm, he's uh, just sparkling but when you read his book it's just depressing anyway uh the book when when the buddha needs therapy the which book is depressing when the buddha needs therapy oh you found it depressing okay yeah. and no i found his remarks in the end of the book okay he talks about the last three years of the pandemic and what happened to him and that he got was almost an alcohol addict he was addicted to alcohol just to keep calm and then he did the ketamine psychotherapy so it's really um yeah i've been thinking about you victoria on and off and off and on and on and off uh but i don't dare go any deeper and so I pass on to Christine. <laughs> okay, good morning. I'm in Southern California and uh, doing okay. The bronchitis or whatever I had finally cleared after three weeks, so I'm feeling better. And um, mostly just doing holiday preparations. You know, it starts as soon as Thanksgiving is over onto the next holiday. And uh, I'm a little, I always get a little stressed. I'm sure we all do because there's stuff to get done. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how to fit it in. I'm also getting busier at work at the same time. That always seems to happen. <laughs> Somehow I managed to uh, pile on too much work. And also while I'm trying to go shopping and decorate and bake and do all those other things, but it's all good. I, I've come to realize after all these years, nothing bad ever happens. Nothing bad will happen. You know, we all get through it and enjoy it uh, in the long run. Um, what else? Um, my piano, I have a digital piano and it broke. I had a repair person come out. He repaired what I needed repaired. And within a week, my piano was no longer working. <laughs> So it could be coincidence, but you know, it was pretty upsetting um, to have a perfectly good piano then <laughs> not work at all. So I'm trying to determine if I can get this repaired, but that would involve getting purchasing another piano um, like mine. And this is a 25 year old digital piano. I'm of the mindset that investing in a 25 year old digital piano is probably not the right way to go but the alternative is getting another piano and um piano instruments are expensive aren't they victoria <laughs> instruments are i mean it's not as bad as buying a car but it's a lot of money to spend so it, it takes a lot of consideration so involved in shopping for that and uh, a friend uh, recommended Greg Hamilton. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Craig Hamilton. And so I listened to one of his uh, broadcasts this weekend, which I enjoyed. Um, he does conscious awakening. So his idea is that meditation is to awaken your consciousness, which in shorthand is to um, discover your true nature. You know, enlightenment is about really discovering who you truly are. Um, what are all what are all of our nature is, I guess he would say. Uh, so that was interesting. I, uh, you know, the next step, of course, is to buy his course <laughs> in Conscious Awakening. And I'm not ready to do that because not because I'm not interested, but I find I have I tend to get into these things and then I have trouble following through and, and getting to it. So I've learned not to commit myself because chances are I will lose my way uh, at some point and then 
it's like, why did I do that? So I'll wait and see what he continues to offer for free. But um, so far, I liked his uh, offerings. So looks like you're shaking your, you're nodding your head, Monia. So I guess you're familiar with him. Yeah. And I'm done. Pass on to Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Hello. <clears throat> I just woke up. Um, it looks like it. The voice <laughs> sounds like it. <laughs> You're the first person I'm talking to. Um, let's see. I'm in Portland. Um, it snowed yesterday, which was like, I know it's the weather, but but I have to say that it, this is not a weather report. This is delight. I um. I was drinking some coffee and I hadn't looked outside yet. And, and Galen said, have you looked outside? And I, and I just, I looked up and I went, Oh, and I was so excited. And I got my big puffy coat and I ran outside and I drank my coffee in the snow. And I was delighted. I love the snow. It's my favorite. I don't like it when it gets slushy and bad, but anyway, and today there's sunshine, which is also, I've discovered, um, kind of rare in Portland. Um, you get about a few minutes of sunshine per day if you're lucky. Um, so anyway, I'm delighted by sun and snow. Um, what's going on? Two weeks. I don't know. I feel like a lot happens in two weeks. Um, Thanksgiving was the last in the last two weeks. We were both sick. Um, we were going to have friends over but then decided that wasn't a good idea. Um, but somehow we're still too excited about the idea of Thanksgiving and accidentally bought all of the food anyway. We were going to do something small. And then at the shop, we got all the ingredients. <laughs> so we ended up doing the entire Thanksgiving dinner just for the two of us. And we, we were in the kitchen for 12 hours. And it was very hard and very stressful. And we were feeling sick and tired and didn't really know why we were doing it. Um, it was very delicious. We had a lot of food for a long time, um, but it was kind of weird. I think the holidays are weird. Christine, you're talking about being stressed, and I feel like December should be a time. I mean, the winter is supposed to be a time of rest, um, and this this frenzy of the holidays, I feel like, is very counter to what the season is supposed to be about and I think what we need at this time of year which is to really like kind of absorb the year and rest and be quiet and and you know but and maybe hibernate I don't know maybe I want to be a bear um let's see what else oh and this weekend I took a um qigong workshop um I've never done qigong before that was very interesting um and I'm very interested to learn more about all of that um, and thinking about energy and also preserving your own energy and where can you draw and draw in energy so that you're not draining yourself. And um, yeah, so that's very interesting. I don't know, I'm, it, you know, one weekend is not enough to make it a practice, but it might be useful to make it a practice. So um anyway so those are my updates I think um on Thursday we're driving down starting to drive down south um we're going to uh my favorite choreographer well I've actually never seen his work live I've, I've, I've obsessed over one little snippet of a piece my whole well not my whole life but I don't know the last 15 years um he's a Greek choreographer and and artist Dimitri Papa now I don't know how to pronounce his name um, anyway, he has two U.S. showcase, not showcase, he's doing, he does a full length evening work, um, that's new and he's touring all over Europe, but he only had two U.S. stops. One was in New York and one is in San Francisco. And I wasn't in New York anymore. And everyone is saying this is the best work he's ever made. Um, and I've never gotten to see his work live anyway. So since we were going to go down to San Diego for the holidays anyway, we're driving early to go to the show in San Francisco on Friday. And then we'll make our way down to San Diego and 
and then deal with the estate again, which I'm not looking forward to. And then hopefully get that done in a, less than a week if we can, so that we can enjoy the holidays and not be stressed out, which is the goal. Okay, that's it. That was a lot of talking. That's me. So to me, first I wanted to, um, to propose, I have heard something about uh, holidays, the rituals, do we need them? What, how should we live them? What meaning uh, do they have for us? Or something could be a good topic for today, if you agree. Uh, my weeks were, I had the little doggy uh, sterilized and she's fine. And, you know, it's always a bit preoccupation because of the Anas, Anastasia, uh, how do you say, Anas, Anastasia. Um, uh, I had a cat who died in a, it had a shock was once when she was sedated. And so I'm always a little bit preoccupied, but it went well and everything. And then I rediscovered after a year, maybe not a year, I always had the book and the audio book uh, present and always read or listened a little bit. I think I told you about the Diamonds of Heaven, LSD and the Mind of the Universe from Chris Page. And I discovered new uh, interviews and I really like them. And there's also a course to be bought. And I decided with a friend that we buy it together. And I already listened to it and it was only the recording. That's how they do that. You know, they give you only the recording and then you don't have all these interactions, which is when it is live. But anyway, I saw that these courses often are not really giving you more than the free uh, the free things you get anyway, or the books. So I was quite a little bit disappointed uh, having spent the money and uh, nothing more than than I already heard. But the, um, the interviews, they're really exciting because every interviewer, I, I heard three or four now from different people. One is done by John Dupuis and Roger Welsh, uh, also very nice. Everybody is asking a little bit different questions. And so there come other aspects, you know, while in the course, he's sort of going through his book and the book now, by now I know it. So it's not really, I say to you, Christine, because maybe the course, it's not needed to, to, to buy. They want to make some money, that's for sure, you know, and it's, you know, fair enough but it's not necessary in many ways, in my opinion. Anyway, that's so far, I'm fine. I, I don't do a, a organ recital as, you know, some days are a little bit like this and some other are a little bit, little bit like that, but altogether I'm happy that in my age, I don't have the, the things which other people have. So I'm quite okay. So, is it okay to talk about the holidays? First of all, I wanted to introduce holidays. The Italian, uh, the Americans say always holidays, happy holidays when it is about Christmas or happy holidays when it's about Easter. Why don't we uh, use our traditional words? Why do we need to, to sort of push them away, push the original, uh, original reason for these days away? Why don't we name that anymore? What do you think is the reason and how does it land with you? Would you say have Merry Christmas? I always write Merry Christmas, by the way. And uh, would you do that or would you do the political correct expressions? Well, I used to hate it. I used to get so annoyed when people said happy holidays. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I have been in the middle of the laundry, so I had to save my house from a flood. Um, I, I've learned um, during the pandemic, because I've been going to all these interfaith things, um, Buddhist and um, even Islamic. I'm part of something called the Rumi, the Rumi Forum now, which is Islamic um, based in um, Washington, D.C., um, and so I, I now have respect for happy holidays because 
also because the proximity, like especially like the Jewish, um, like last year, um, I got a menorah for the first time, <laughs> and and learned all the um, the Jewish songs for the menorah and lit, lit the candle every night, and it was really fun. Um, and so, so the proximity of Hanukkah to um, Christmas is inevitable every year and the proximity of Passover to Easter. So right there, it's um, it's genuinely important to acknowledge. I mean, what I do actually, because happy holidays is kind of vague um, and it's become very like pablum. It doesn't really mean anything. Although, you know, holidays means holy days. So technically it's the real thing, but um, people have forgotten that of course. But what I try to do as much as possible is, is whatever group I'm in, I refer to the actual holiday. Like the Buddha, the Buddhists don't have anything terribly exciting, unfortunately. Well, that's true in general. <laughs> Something about being an atheist. <laughs> um, my friend says, I don't want to be an atheist. They don't have any holidays. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, with the Buddhists, it's pretty generic, but um, but definitely with the um, with my Jewish friends, I, I honor, uh, and they have lots of holidays. I mean, they have even more than Christians. So, and I know the whole year, cause I used to have a landlady in New York from Israel and she went to temple every, every single holiday plus every Shabbat, which is Saturday. So, I mean, she was the real deal. So, um, yeah, so that's my answer on it. I think, um, but I know what you mean, Heidi. When I before I got involved with all these different faiths, it just drove me up the wall, especially because my mother went ballistic when our local Christmas parade suddenly turned into a holiday parade, and then it was really boring and stupid because nobody, everyone was terrified of making a mistake. And now it's gone back after a hundred years. Now it's gone back to being the Christmas parade unapologetically, and if people don't want to participate, everyone's welcome to participate. And if they don't want to, because they think it's politically incorrect, so be it. Which um, I think is kind of funny because it's sometimes the politically correct thing just takes the wind out of people's sails and then nobody wants to do anything. They just want to like give up and watch TV. So that's my take on it. Well, I was saying holidays because I was talking about all of them at the same time. And that at all of them, Thanksgiving, I mean, I think Thanksgiving doesn't happen in Europe, but Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, even, I don't know, Valentine's Day, uh, whatever. St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is tomorrow. Are you going to send me a box? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. But ever since I was a child, my mother has hmm, honored St. Nicholas Day. Um, and it's quite a delight. Um, I always get I always get uh, mandarin oranges and usually well the, the latest tr the tradition since we moved to the States, I don't know what it was before, was I also got coal from Krampus, except that the coal is um dark chocolate covered honeycomb so it's actually my favorite I want crumpers to send me coal um and chocolates and all kinds of surprises oh peanuts in the shell that's the other tradition um I like that holiday I I don't know I yeah I was talking about all the holidays I mean it's I think what's frustrating to me is the is the stress and the expectation and and you know you're supposed to get gifts for everybody. And, and I, at some point developed this habit and exuberance of getting multiple gifts for everybody. So that like heightens the whole thing and all the cooking and it's a lot. Um, but I have to say, it's quite fun when you're getting to enjoy it. And it's quite fun when someone else is doing it for you. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think about, um, when I have children one day, I think I'll, I'll enjoy surprise, surprising them or, you know, having them go to bed and waking up and there's something magical the next day. I think that's very exciting. And I look forward to doing that for them. So that wasn't really answering your question, Heidi. Well, except that I was referring to all the holidays. 
I, I think the thing about the holidays is there is a lot of tradition around it. And if you don't kind of mark the day or the season in some way, then it just becomes any other part of the year. So you try to do things that are special and unique for this season, whether it's baking or sending out cards or presents or any number of things. Um, and without doing them, it's, you know, it's again, a little flat, it kind of loses its meaning, but I find that, you know, I'm, I'm the torchbearer for a lot of uh, traditions in our family, uh, being the mom, being the wife, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, you know, I, I end up being the one to decide <laughs> or having to initiate uh, some rituals and, and traditions. Um, I always kind of, the one tradition I pretty much always leave off every year is sending out cards. So please don't expect any. <laughs> I uh, That's like the lowest of my pri my priorities for traditions. And above that is baking or, or cooking any special food, partly because we don't need extra calories, but it's fun. Um, I enjoy that. And I guess this year, you know, the past couple of years, we have not gone to church on Christmas Eve because the service has not been in person. Um, and this year, the service will be in person. And I like to go. I find it very uplifting. It's mostly, um, well, it's it's almost all just singing Christmas carols. There's a short sermon. And they read the Christmas story from the Bible. But the choir singing, and we we do candlelight. And the whole thing is very lovely to me. And I always feel warm and good when it's done. But I've also found that not going this past three or two or three years, um, I guess two years we skipped, uh, you know, we hung out together at home. And in some ways that was lovely too, because we had maybe a closer family experience by being at home on Christmas Eve um, as opposed to going to church. So I don't know. I Again, I'm probably going to have to be the ringleader because nobody else is going to want to initiate going to um, Christmas Eve service except for me. And so I'm weighing that. I'm weighing both options and, um, you know, which I truly want to do, you know, which is it that uh, would bring me the most pleasure. So it'll it'll be based on that. Yeah. Does anybody else feel like they are the torchbearer for their family traditions? No, uh, my husband is. So we have the lights on the balcony and maybe I'll show you, I have one light here in the window. So oh, that's uh, bells. There it goes. There, bells. And we light every Sunday. We light the candle. We have to put candles on the Advent crowns. And to us, it's Weihnachten. It, it's not holidays. It's Weihnachten. Fröhliche Weihnachten, gesegnete Weihnachten, but it's Weihnachten and. Yeah, my husband is a traditionalist and my daughter does the cooking and the, and the grandchildren do the baking. So we just enjoy, <laughs> it's easy for us. Um, yeah, we get together on the 24th and uh, unpack all our gifts and have a nice dinner together and that's about it. It's, um, I don't know if my husband will, go. no, I don't think he will, because he hasn't been, uh, during the pandemic, he hasn't gone to church. He just watches uh, on television the services. And he's, he, he doesn't walk too well. So I've, I'm sure he will stay home. But they went to uh, the Christmas services always family. I say they because I 
I'm too much of a Buddhist to, uh, well, anyway, it's, uh, did you, has any, any one of you read God 9.0? It's, I only know it in German, it's God 9.0 by uh, Küstenmacher, Dicke Küstenmacher. And his wife has written Integral Christianity. So the involvement that should happen to Christian churches, but hasn't. And in particular, the, she blames the Catholic Church and econo, ecumene, ecumenism, no, ecumene, that the uh, ecumenical. Hmm? ecumenical ecumenical and that the evangelical church in Germany and in Austria hasn't pulled through to orange and green and uh, so it's quite interesting to read. Um, yeah, I have no problem with uh, Weihnachten, but I know a couple of women my age or older who hate it but it's just one of their traumas from childhood. That's what I figured out. And so I let her, whatever she wants, not to celebrate and I celebrate what I whenever want to celebrate. Um, yeah, um, this year is the first time that I decorated our Easter palm twigs, which I still kept in the window. And I put on Christmas decoration. <laughs> so, because Easter and uh, Christmas, it's related somehow. And I felt, why shouldn't I? So maybe that's a new ritual I just invented. But I liked it. And uh, I like to feed the birds when winter comes. So this is kind of a ritual that always comes around Christmas and they accept it gladly and we have just, uh, they just switch around and, and, and it's nice to watch them. And of course the squirrels come as well. So this is more like celebrating Christmas, not just for ourselves, but with all the living creatures around, which is very Buddhist as such, <laughs> again. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to contribute. Uh, but of course, I had all these times you have, Christine, uh, doing all the cooking and I never baked, but my, my mother and my mother-in-law, they baked for Christmas. And that was nice too, yeah. But now it's just... We had, uh, by the way, because you mentioned that one of our leftist in Vienna, leftist political party, demanded that uh, they no longer say Grüß Gott when they come into the room, because in Vienna we say Guten Tag. And of course, that he didn't get through with that. Everybody was just, uh, because we are just used to say Grüß Gott. Uh, particularly on the in the countryside, and that's so ridiculous. So, and, and this is how they uh, they must be desperate if they bring up such things. It's and everybody says says that they are just lucky that they don't have to run the government at this time because it's really difficult, and I don't envy any of our politicians. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I have all the gifts already behind me. <laughs> yeah, I have all the gifts. I have all, and we have ordered all the food already uh, at Bofrost. Delicious food. So actually I'm very relaxed. <laughs> I just let it approach. And I guess this is something I really enjoy at my age, being my age and not having to be the motor of everything, the engine 
behind everything and just as you said the torch bearer it's yeah forget the torches set everything on fire <laughs> but we also have a little tree outside because we have a live tree we don't have them so it's usually maybe that's our way to contribute to the climate but we have it's it's about this high and we decorate it so it has lights on it when but not now on the last sunday before christmas we decorate the tree and yeah enjoy that on the other hand uh, i forgot to mention that in the apartment above everything has been torn out so we have been uh, having noise drilling hammering for weeks and they didn't inform us that they would do it this way and this today i just went up and said how long is this going to take because i try to live a life and not just it's 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 a group of um, eastern uh, workers and they are just told everything has to be pulled out and new and done new and this is something around this time of the year that really gets on your nerves because you can't get out that much. And yeah, they, there were five or six men up there and I came up rather furious <laughs> and they just moved back. <laughs> I felt like, uh, yeah, I said, if you live under what you're doing, the noise you're doing, it's impossible. You can't, you have to leave the apartment, but I can't go shopping all the time. And I, I won't go shopping anymore. And I don't do much shopping that way. And actually one of my, our granddaughters uh, suggested that everybody just gets one gift. Not everybody gives everybody a gift, but everybody just select someone uh, drawing poles uh, uh, to get one gift and our grandson opposed it vehemently because he wants to get gifts as much as he can he just moved into a new in the apartment of my mother and really redecorated everything and now he needs of course lots of things glasses and mugs and 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 toilet paper <laughs> things like that. so he so we sort of and i i supported him and said no i just want to give everybody a gift if i know what to give her or him and uh yeah not being so toilet paper is the perfect gift isn't it <laughs> right okay so i it's it's a it's not a very quiet season but i just shun the media this is what i notice and i try to go inside and it's good so and i wouldn't uh, subscribe to any seminar anymore because either i have it or i don't so it's because you always have it already uh, victoria you too so you don't you don't have to go to all these seminars. It's, you, it's already in you, and yeah, okay. So um, that's a very long talk, and I can pass on to Heidi. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, for me, uh, Christmas has been very nice in childhood. You know, with the uh, trees and singing, and it was maybe initiation for me to sing. Even my family was not really very musical, but my father, he sang, my mother never. But it was just like wonderful, you know, to, to two days before Christmas, the door was closed of the Christmas room and they decorated inside and we looked through the keyhole and tried to figure out what they were doing in there. So for me, it was fascinating. Then later, not so much. And uh, as an adult, uh, quite early I decided not to do the gift thing and we never did unless there was really something which during the year and short time before Christmas came to my mind oh I would like to give that to, to a certain person then I did but not as a as a duty 
to to give gifts away, you know. And then um, I had the choir in Rome in the church, and for fifty not even twenty years, I don't know how long, I went every twenty fourth of December, and we had this um, um, service singing and. That's I still like it, you know. It's it's uh, it's nice, but I don't do uh, 70, 80 kilometers now for to go to this church. I did it because it was sort of work. I never really um, did the decoration thing, but still, this period of time is special for me. I mean, I don't know how to say it, but. Very prosaic, uh, you can say that the existence of these holi holidays, of these celebrations, of these, how do you say, um, festa, uh, these fests, these, no? This is also, like I think, Christine, you said it, to structure the year, to structure the time. If we didn't have that, it would be every day the same. Da -da 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 -da. And so there is something to look forward for. Even if maybe it doesn't come out as we thought, but 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 it's get, getting something special, and then it's over, and then you know you you prepare for the next one. Otherwise, I think life would be quite boring if we didn't have. It must not be a Christian um, celebration; could be something else. Holidays, real holy. I mean, holidays in the sense of going to some place. For instance, the conference in Hungary or something. No, these are all things where you can look forward to, and uh, which are structuring your your life in many ways. And I think this Christian um, uh, holidays or fests. I think they make sense because we are born and grown in this culture, and I. I accept that there are other people and they can do their own stuff, but mainly we have the Christian culture in still, <laughs> how long, I don't know, in our uh, areas. And so that it is a, a general um, holiday, I think it is right. And that we do it also, that we celebrate it in our traditional ways. Although we might be integral and I don't know what, but we can enjoy uh, also a little bit of being conservative, you know, and I think there are some of the habits we have which are worth conserving. Maybe they have changed the meaning in the meantime. That can be, but still hold on. on. Don't throw the, the, the past away, the history and the, the roots, I think. We need to, to take care for our roots by at the same time not staying stuck there. That's what I think. And so at here in Italy, the 24th, you wouldn't really celebrate, only at night at 12 o'clock, there will be the mm -hmm. service. I never went because I sleep at 12 o'clock. And uh, then the next day, the people in the family comes together and I always went uh, or invited friends for, we have a meal together and, with candles and everything that's it's nice I like it but it's not that I need to do more and I don't do baking and and things because I remember in past times how often we were full like this and then it's too much <laughs> also I like the food I, I have to say if other people do it I don't like to do it so much myself Anyway, if you want to invite me to your <laughs> Christmas days, I come and eat a little. <laughs> okay, so that's for me. Didn't we talk once about rituals also in this group? I think, yeah, this is these are important rituals for me, Christmas and Easter and even Pentecost. No? Uh, do you say Pentecost in English? Pentecost. Yeah, or in Italy, that's the 15th of uh, uh, August, Ferragosto. And these are all days which mark certain stations in the year. And I think that's that's fine. I wouldn't, Ferragosto. Oh, go ahead. I wouldn't like to have them abolished. Not at all. 
Ferragosto is um, Maria Himmelfahrt. Yeah. Yeah. Pen and Pentecost seems to be, oh, Pfingsten is Pentecost. Mm -hmm. in yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to share that um, one, one of my mother's greatest gifts, um, which I have tried to continue um, with Beatrice, is that my mother, um, well, I, I really raised it to new heights, but my mother loved holidays. She loved decorating the whole house and she loved giving parties. She was a great hostess. And um, she just loved the fun of special food for special occasions. So we pretty much can go through the American calendar and um, get a holiday every month. Um, the only ones that you have to kind of, you know, sort of search around is like, um, um, well, June, I guess you have Father's Day in June, um, but otherwise like there's a flag day. <laughs> I mean, there's like, if you really want to like scramble to find something, but um, but what I did was I raised it at one notch when I was a child that um, I knew all the birth and death dates of all my favorite composers. So, and then I would insist to my mother too that I had to stay home on those days. I couldn't go to school because it was disrespectful. So, um, so I dug up all kinds of composers, Corelli and Vivaldi and Telemann and Bach and Mozart and Beethoven and Brahms and Schubert, I mean, just on and on. And I had all those in the calendar. And then um, Mozart's of course was the most important and I would make um, Krapfen for him, for my life-size Mozart doll and um, stay home from school all day so I could serve him his Krapfen and he could read Die Zeit. I had a subscription to Die Zeit um, newspaper and Mozart, my Mozart doll would sit in a comfortable chair and eat Krapfen and read the newspaper. Um, so, um, but but it's absolutely true what you said, Heidi. It was just it made the year the year goes by so happily because um, there's always something to look forward to, and you can decorate. Um, and so so something I inherited, and I'm I'm really grateful to my mother for that because it there, it sort of makes. And then when we like when we moved to Japan, um, there are all those Japanese holidays, the, the um, Doll Day, which is celebrates girls when they're three, five, and seven. Isn't that right? Chi Chi, whatever. Okay. Anyway, I'll, I won't talk anymore. But um, but living overseas meant that I could add in the the local holidays from those countries and cultures. So then the year's really packed full, and it's um, it's so much fun. I mean, every year Beatrice makes fun of me, but every year somehow I end up in New York for Chinese New Year's, which I love, and I always get an animal that is the animal for the year. Like this year it was the tiger. I think I showed you my tiger and nobody liked it. But anyway, um, that's the tradition. Um, yeah, it makes the year really, you always have something to look forward to. Maybe a little too much in my case, <laughs> especially if food is involved. <laughs> I was going to say music is such a big part of the winter holidays. I mean, the you know, hearing all the carols and all the interesting songs and fun songs, it's a good part of it, even though we've heard them all hundreds of times, right? Yeah, I normally would uh, listen to Weihnachtsoratorium uh, every Christmas. I sang it often in choirs and also as soloist. So that's really, um, uh, yeah. And also for Easter, then the passions, no? Passion, Johannes Passion, Matthäus Passion. So that's what I regularly do with this. And it seems the right time to listen to these things. And the, the requiems, from uh, Mozart or also Verdi, I listen to when there is something really not nice going on, like somebody dies, like when Mark died, for instance, I, I listen to, especially to Verdi Requiem because it's really so expressive. And I might even listen it, to it three or four times in these situations. But also when a cat dies, then there might be also Mozart enough, but you know, for uh, I I look for occasions uh, to 
I can listen to them and watch the, the music, the, 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 the orchestras and choirs also for other occasions, but there are some occasions where it's a, a sort of a, a need to listen to certain music, at least for me. And every day you can listen to the coffee cantata by Bach. <laughs> coffee is the holiday every day. Yeah, I don't drink coffee, but I I, I sang this cantata once, even on a on a on a, um, on a, like with the costumes, you know, like like played, and that was nice. <laughs> Many years ago in my previous life, let's say. <laughs> so, Victoria, did you recommend Mozart's Funeral March or Mozart's Requiem? I, I forget. Oh, oh, we'll do it all. Do it all. It's a long oh. day today. Um, <laughs> no, I recommended the Requiem, but the, um, Requiem. yeah, you're right. Okay. You're right. The, um, the Trauer Mersche, or whatever they're, whatever they're called, that from, um, for the, the Freemasonic, those are those were also among his last works. He wrote them for friends who died that were his Freemason um, brothers or whatever you call them. Um, those are pretty rare, but they're beautiful. They're really beautiful, actually, if you can track them down. But um, yeah, in general, Mozart, I mean, on his birthday, I play everything imaginable. But that's how I started playing, actually physically playing, because um, on his 250th birthday, I thought, okay, my childhood tradition is, you know, it's not, it's not good enough now because I became a violinist because of Mozart. So now, now I have to actually play myself. And that's how I started my big marathon tradition that um, playing, actually pl performing all the works um, on the birthday of the composer or the death day. I'm doing, I was supposed to do Stravinsky during the pandemic on his 50th death day, but it kept getting postponed because of the pandemic. And now I think they, they kept asking me to put it back on the calendar. So it's in January and I think it's going to be my death day. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean that. I would like to ask Beatrice uh, about the piano. How is this coming along? What are you planning to do there? It's so oh. beautiful. <laughs> it was very exciting to have it last week we had the technician over okay. and uh he cleaned it and he took took the whole keyboard out of the the I've never seen that happen before mm -hmm. so you take the whole keyboard out of the um out of the piano and it was filling around and vacuuming and dusting and he tuned a couple he fixed a couple notes he said it wasn't ready for tuning yet because it should stay in its new space for at least six weeks first to adjust to the humidity mm -hmm. and the airflow and everything in the space. And then um, right now it's too disjointed and being out of tune, but usually the, the piano will kind of acclimate and then will be more consistently out of tune and then it can be mm -hmm. adjusted mm -hmm. and will actually stay. So we'll get it properly tuned um, in January when we get back from the holidays. Because I um, got my, yeah. but it was just an upright, not like yours, but I got it from Sweden, specially made. And then it turned out that uh, they had not, uh, the, the metal hadn't set, hadn't settled uh, enough. So they returned it to Sweden and then I got an, a second one. But it was just uh, a delight when, when, when we opened, uh, we had an open house and everybody played the piano. So that was, that was nice. So yeah, and now it's uh, sitting at the apartment of my grandchildren and my daughter. <laughs> and I guess it's only played when I get over there to babysit or to dog sit. And at Christmas, then my son-in-law, he plays the Christmas songs that we all sing. And unfortunately it's also taped, so it sounds just terrible, but it's, yeah, it's nice. We got used to it. But uh, you have to take lessons, Beatrice. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, it. and, and um, get to know all of the musicians in the area and invite them over. Uh, you probably know the movie, um, Und täglich grüßt das Murmeltier, what, how, how is it in English? Um, about the groundhog that comes 
every year. And uh, so the same day is repeated over and over and over again. And he learns the piano in this time. So he gets a perfect playing the piano. And yeah, so this is one of the things that really gets uh, enhances your being a person, a human being. Groundhog Day, yes, exactly, that's it. That's a nice movie. Ladies, I am still tired because I have to drink for medical <laughs> reasons. I have to drink a beer, which I hate. So I drink uh, uh, Prosecco, champagne, uh, to get my, my kidneys going. And that makes me tired. So I'm even more tired now <laughs> and maybe not very coherent. But I wish you, do we see each other again before Christmas? I think so. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. So I wish you happy pre-Christmas, Advent. Advent, yeah. <laughs> Advent, yeah. Enjoy every day of it. It will never come back again. <laughs> do you give over? Well, I give over to Christine. Um, well, thank you, Monia. Yes, everybody enjoy the next couple of weeks. And I wish I had a disorder where I could be drinking Prosecco. That would be lovely. <laughs> That's <laughs> That sounds like a good one for a change, right? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm good. I'm complete. Enjoy seeing you guys today. Thanks. If you tend to kidney stones, it's also advised to get rid of the stone. So in case, just you know that, yeah. But okay. beer should be even more effective, but I just... Is it the, is it the bubbliness? The... No, 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 it's just, uh, I don't know what it is, but it just, uh, yeah, you, it, there's also a tea, but it tastes just terrible. And uh, it, it also has the same effect. So I rather stick with the <laughs> bubbly stuff. <laughs> okay. And I'll turn over to Beatrice. Well, it's always worth waking up for you. So <laughs> lovely to see all of you. And I look forward to the next one. Um, I'll be in San Diego with my mother um, for that one. So a likely it, story. I think this year, oh, stop. I think this year I've tuned in from more places than ever before. It's been you counted year. already where you've been? Um, well, I want to do, before the year is out, I want to do kind of a, yeah, a good, review good, of the yeah. year, um, which maybe that's what we'll do next time because that's I think it's our last yeah. session of the year. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, um, and then in January, we can do our future thinking oh that'll be fun to see how what we thought this year was going to be I don't remember um yeah I can't believe we're at the end of the year all right I'll pass over um to Heidi yeah thank you I always enjoy talking to you with everybody and I'm glad for the year that has passed and we are still together enjoying each other's company and I give over to Victoria. I haven't he heard you yet playing the violin. I'm still waiting for that moment. We can yeah, now right. on Zoom, there is original sound for musicians. We can uh, have probably a decent sound now as opposed to some time ago. So you might oh. next time maybe. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. If you say Let's do an aria together. No, we can't do it together. <laughs> together, I don't know if we can. No, it doesn't work. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. I'm, um, of course, in the middle of a retreat, and I have to go back to it now. And it's, I had to get up this morning at, in the darkness at 6 a.m. to do Qigong and, and metta meditation. So now... <laughs> Now um, I'll do med meta meditation for all of you, especially Monia, who's horrified at my excessive retreats. <laughs> um, so um, 
Yeah, this is so much more fun. I, I have to say that um, I, I, Monia is my, is, is my, is the most um, humorous Buddhist that I know. Most of the ones I know are very solemn and austere and fierce, and they have a billion rules and it's very nerve wracking. So, um, so Monia, you can be my guru in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> That'll keep you busy. <laughs> So yeah, lots, it's just to gonna be too much work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have a rest for a few weeks and think about it. Okay. Anyway, great to see everybody. And yeah, so we'll see you. Is it before Christmas or before New Year's? Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. On the nineteenth. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. And we do a rückblick. We just look rückblick. back to the yes. old year. And we sing and, uh, a Christmas song. And we I sing guess you song. all know that uh, the nights, the dreams you have after the 25th until uh, January the 6th that will g give you a prognosis for the next year. You know that? Raunechte. Ah, no. Don't know that? How can you live? <laughs> well, write, write it to us. Write it to us so we can do it. Okay. 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 But if you have to remember the dreams. And uh, the dream you have from January 5th to January 6th is, will come true in December 23. So you start, I think, around the, the 26th of, the, of, of December, uh, regular, just writing down your dreams. So December 26th is January, and that what happens in that year. And of okay. course, since people usually eat too much, they have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, Raunechte, it's called in German. Raun? Rau. Rau. Oh, Rau. 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 Raunechte. And it dropped the H. Oh, I never in, heard of it. A new spelling, it dropped the H. Oh, like Weirau. Yeah. No, uh, no, no, not, yeah. No. I'll write it in the chat. All right. You send it to us. <laughs> I have to get back to my Buddhist. So, um, <laughs> Back to Buddha. Bye bye. Okay, girls. Bye bye. And have a nice two weeks until we see you again. Yeah. Bye. And pet your doggy for me. <laughs>